Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Taurus September 2022 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are stopping by for the first time and to the subscribers, much love and affection to you always. You know I love seeing you. Now, you subscribers know that there are no advertisements which break into this reading, so you get to enjoy the experience from beginning until end without having different video playing. And speaking of experience, I've had the great pleasure of doing a number of readings, one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant readings for Taurians over the course of the last month from all different parts of the world. And if you'd like to see what might be involved in getting your own one-on-one -on -one clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description below. But let's see what there is now. Now this deck is, look, I don't know what the deck is called. It is, um, it hasn't come with a guidebook or, or a box or anything like that. It just, it, um, my, my son and daughter were out one afternoon and they found it in a flea market. I don't know what it's called. You might be able to help me, but what I have found is that I think it's pretty old. It could be 30 or 40 years old or something like that. Uh, since its first publication, but we shall see what there is in store for you now by drawing five cards. And five is all we need. So let's see what there is first. It's a very unusual deck. The Father of Swords in the South, otherwise known as the God Ra. Let's see here now. The Fool. Oh, there's runes and a Hebrew letter, Aleph, which is prominently displayed on that. Now they will have spiritual meanings attached to them, the runes. Looks like the Elder Futark uh, runic alphabet. Interesting story about the runes. I won't go into it just now, but we may, if we have time, go into it during the course of the reading. Now, as I say, there are no advertisements interfering with your enjoyment of this video. So let's see what this is. The Five of Stones, and there are some titles on it. I don't know that I necessarily agree with the titles. The Eight of Swords, uh, the astrology on that. There's another hexagram, uh, I Ching hexagram there. Now, it just so happens that, uh, same as on that Five of Swords, just so happens that I, I know a bit about I Ching, and the meanings of the hexagrams. So we'll discuss those when we get to it. And here is card, major card, major arcana 21, the universe, again with a rune and a spiritual Hebrew letter from the Hebrew alphabet. Why don't you come down now? We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do your reading for you. Okay, let's oh, look at these major arcana, the fool and the universe. The Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last of the 22 Major Arcana. Let's look at the Fool first. I can't help myself but to come to this. Let's see what we have here. Interesting. There's a letter, another letter. Let's look at the image first, shall we? Here we have a... Um, the Fool is a medieval court jester. And the jester is required to entertain, but also to speak truths that no one else would dare or care to express. Now, this wounded swan, you can see this cut in the swan that's there. To me, that wounded swan speaks of the fall from grace, the parting of humanity from the Garden of Eden, and at the bottom is Earth. Now, interestingly here, you see this sign here? This is an old alternative, which you very often, very practically never see anymore, symbol for the planet of Uranus. Looking at this Viking letter here, that's, well, no one knows how exactly it was pronounced, but it's thought to be pronounced Voon Joy. And um, that speaks of joy for you. It tells of happiness coming into your life and it indicates success. It can also mean a really pleasant and pleasing journey. Definitely good news. 
It can indicate a deep affection and lasting emotional happiness. Now, if there was a question regarding the object of your affections, this could well represent that person. And there's some activity with this person that I think is going to have happy results. Pleasure through your work is also indicated by this, particularly so if your work is of an artistic or creative nature. Now we then look over here, and of course we're given the number zero. The fool, in a sense, is what we are before we come into matter. Now this is a Hebrew letter here that's called Aleph. It's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it signifies the number one. Aleph indicates the oneness and unity of the Creator. It hints that beyond the illusion of separation and duality, there is an underlying oneness, that nothing is separate, and the Creator is the source of everything. I think this Aleph also represents for you the creation of something from nothing. It is the essential symbol of beginnings, in a way. And, and also of an ultimate reality that cannot be talked about, timeless, spaceless, and yet present everywhere. It is the one that cannot be divided, representing perfection beyond human comprehension. But having been drawn to this symbol of Uranus here, that also speaks of you at this time being freedom-loving, perhaps something sort of rebellious. This card represents both father and mother in the most abstract form of these ideas. Now, this isn't a confusion. It is a deliberate identification by me of the male and female principles. I think that there is an openness with you now, a trust ready to take risk, courage to stand your ground, freedom, independence, creativity, great potential for you now, and the possibility almost of taking a quantum leap and listening in particular to your heart's voice. Being in the present, there's a... You'll be acting without any malice during this period. I think that you are ready for a new beginning, perhaps even a quantum leap. Give in, dare to leap, even if fear attempts to hold you back. Trust the voice from within your heart. Say to yourself, I now follow my heart. I am open and ready to go wherever it may lead me. I am a radiant being. I am a living treasure. I honor and to value the unlimited resource of courage which is within me. I respect the nature of who I am, and there is nothing to fear. Now we should, well, isn't this, doesn't this link so well together? A couple more letters, Viking and Hebrew. Planet Saturn down here, reference to it. Look, I don't, a, a trip, well, to do with time, I think, is the representation of Saturn there. And here is the universe. Now, what is there about here? Well, what we have here is the Earth, this globe here, the bottom half of which is circled by a dragon. You see this green dragon here with its mouth opening up. And uh, both the Earth and the dragon are green, the color of new life. The fire is red, color of energy and blood, and white, color of pure thought. The serpent's breath burns away any illusion. Now this, the spiritual meaning for you of this particular letter here, this Tav, this is the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it means mark, sign, omen, or seal. It is the symbol of truth, perfection, and completion. It represents the restoration of all of existence. 
It is a return to the essence and purpose of your life. It represents completion before beginning again with the original oneness and the Aleph, as we see here. Now, the Tav shows us that the end was set from the beginning. Now, as Tav is the... Look, you might be familiar with the book of Genesis from the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament of the Christian Bible. It actually starts with a heading called, uh, in the Hebrew, it's called Bereshit, meaning in the beginning. And Tav is the last letter of that word Bereshit. Uh, it is the idea here, I think, that the Creator set in motion all of existence in order to reach a final state of perfection, the fulfillment of all of creation. It's also the completion of truth. However, as soon as the Tav is reached, we begin again immediately by going back to the Aleph, back to the one source of everything. The end is never really the end, but the beginning of something new. Now looking at this rune, can we get closer to it? This thing here. That is uh, what I pronounce it as Erhuaz. It's a rune of protection. Now this indicates that you have set your sights on a reasonable target and can achieve your goals. Now, there might be a slight obstacle, a delay or minor problems, I think, but it's not going to cause too much trouble, so don't be too eager to move ahead. Now, the obstacle or delay may very well prove to be beneficial, or it won't turn out to be too big. You should try to anticipate any problems that might arise with things. Always have a plan B. The advice here is to be flexible and work with change. Use your imagination and turn any situation to your advantage. I think there's also some sort of a tie to the past here for you. It can mean that you will hear from someone from your past. Uh, sometimes this can indicate that problems from your past that weren't, that were not dealt with effectively could be returning. Yeah, but problems that previously had no answer will soon be solved. Although it's possible, there's a chance here there could be some delays involved in that. Nevertheless, there is a completion of a project. Your efforts are finally paying off. It's been a long, hard haul, but you're just about there. And this is a reminder for you to finish what you started. And I think you're learning to take control of your destiny. You'll be using the power of your will to get results. I think it's now possible for you to see things as they really are. The stage is set for a new beginning or a favorable completion. The events in your life are in harmony with the universe. From what aspects of your life is it time to free yourself? Is there a journey or enterprise waiting for you to set it in motion? Trust your perceptions and say to yourself, I love to explore the unknown. I'm excited about bringing ideas and creative projects into form. I deeply value making a contribution that makes the world a better place to live. I am one with the universe. Uh, who else might there be around? Ah, oh, this looks interesting. Here we have Ra. Ra is in ancient Egyptian times the sun god. He's normally protected as uh, a pro projected uh, as being a falcon with the sun on his head and a green asp. Some people might call it a cobra uh, around him. Uh, he and, and that he just wears on his head. He is the father of all creation and of fertility. Now, interestingly, a lot of Taurus around you, but Gemini is about as well, because I think that you will have the energy of the mind in Gemini with the influence and stability and determination of Taurus. This is a man, although I can, as a court card, refer to either gender. 
who is active, clever, skillful, fierce and courageous. Very goal-oriented, I think you'll be at this time. Ambitious. You'll have very flexible intellectual powers. And there's a passion about you, a vehemence about you. Only goals which are emotionally charged can kindle such a passion. But body, intellect and spirit are in harmony and they, they all work together for you. I think you'll be having a clear insight into a problem and working quickly to set goals without letting anything getting in your way. Do you know, I think that this is telling me though that this is something of a restless period for you where you are transitioning and trying to get somewhere else, either in your everyday life or possibly travel. But it is a time for you to listen to your head rather than your heart. I get the impression that he is actually someone who's more comfortable in, in his head rather than expressing feelings. But this represents a restlessness in all aspects of life, I think. Maybe you want to break free of the workplace. You're in a good position now to forge plans, to set goals and bring them to fruition. Do you know your goal? Are you able to specifically and quickly write it down and say it in one sentence and imagine how you'll best be able to enjoy your success. Say to yourself, I know my goal and I know what I am working towards. Each goal is just a milestone on the way to my ultimate destination. Now let's have a look and see what there might be. Why don't we do this? Uh, oh, that's an interesting... I think I know what that is. Let's have a look. Now here is the Eight of Swords. It's entitled Interference. Now I'm not a great fan of titles on cards because cards have different meanings depending on where they are placed and of course as to what messages are coming through. But here while the swords, here are a couple of trees here, while the swords do not cut the trees, the trees appear ill. They symbolize nature in trouble and perhaps a sick spirituality. A bright light, however, shines on the trees and on the plants. Now looking at this hexagram here, that is Shi Ho. Shi Ho means, um, uh, in general, it would call uh, biting through, I suppose. I mean, often we think that life can be unfair. However, if we look at the natural world, there is nothing resembling justice. Nature merely evens out its extremes or removes blockages to achieve balance. And this truth will eventually come to light in the situations that you face. You are a part of nature. If you have attached yourself to illusions of right and wrong that block your forward progress, then Shi Ho biting through will dispel the illusion. Unless growth is in the equation, life tends to reorganize by breaking things down. Ideas that foster separateness or boundaries blocking renewal or union need to be chewed over or presented through experience until the illusion is transformed into clarity. Do you understand what I'm saying there? We can sometimes also live too much in the inner world. And it is, however, time for you to step out onto the stage or to make your debut whether or not you're ready. Now you can create a false sense of reality and believe it is real. Obstruction as the hidden influence shows that any blockage will come down. Discernment is how the truth has to be given careful consideration if you'd rather not face it. Now, there is a sort of a, a mouth presented in this hexagram here, and the, 
the focus on the mouth encourages clear communication. If there's something to be said to another, then speak up. Just speak up. If it is real, it will endure, and a truth spoken is the only cure. If you are expecting clarity from another, it might not be forthcoming. This is because they may feel too severely judged by you. Now, the best way to communicate during a time like this is to put personal agendas aside to truly understand the needs of the other party. Clarifying roles and boundaries might be in order, or you may need to simply be there for someone while they figure out their own confusion. Now, this Shio energy can lead to union, but you must have a willingness to listen. This is not about sacrifice, however. The other party's needs and sense of purpose must align with your needs and sense of purpose. Often, when exploring another's intentions, the answer shows unavailability because of a, an unchangeable truth or law that blocks union. A prior commitment such as marriage or an incompatibility of age or lifestyle can obstruct progress. The truth is more important than wishes when receiving this energy. It is time for you to see the truth in this situation, and until you do, your progress may be blocked, open to the possibilities that can emerge after the truth is clearly recognized. Now that only leaves us, I think, with this one, doesn't it? Let's have a look. Does it? This one. Yeah, again, I'm I'm not a great fan of titles on cards. They, they generally are just completely, completely misleading. But here, what do we have in the image here? Well, dead or dying trees are before a pool of stagnant water. The stones float with no purpose and with no direction. The red spot you see on them here, there, there, well, the red spot that, that can be a wound or possibly life energy at the center of the dark time. Now there's a feather from a, a white bird here and that reflects the beauty of winter. It also reflects a turning point in your life when things have been difficult. Now they turn around and become better for you. Now, with all these ying lines, and you, you count them from the bottom and go on the way up, see that's female ying, 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 to the sixth line, which is a yang, unbroken. That would be the hexagram po. Now, there are times when disintegration or letting go is the only pathway to regeneration. This is a message about how things become stronger by removing outgrown elements. Pruning a tree allows its branches to become more luxuriant. In this situation, there is a need for you to release what is outworn or which no longer serves you so that you can return to a path that is more fulfilling. Sometimes you have to separate aspects in your life in order to achieve balance. A relationship that is in this stage can reach an impasse when either release or renew is at play. It can no longer operate within the unhealthy dynamics of the past, is what I'm feeling. Similarly, a relationship reaching a commitment phase can also become more stressed as each partner examines the other more closely. Now, like fall or autumn, leaves are stripped away in preparation for the rebirth of spring. When familiar landscapes die away, it can be frightening. However, this is how nature moves towards the next cycle, and you are part of nature. The time requires patience, where at other times you might be 
tempted to break through a difficulty with action. Now you must acknowledge that there is little you can do to change events other than to let go and open to the inner experience. The hidden influence here shows a need to respond inwardly while awaiting for the change to complete its cycle outwardly. What a particularly interesting set of cards for you. Good job. That's the way it is for you. This I have month. to tell you that I thought that was a really interesting reading for you then. I really enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did providing it to you. This is going to be a good month for you. I can see it here and that's what it says for you now. So enjoy yourself. And of course, I'll then uh, see you next month. And remember this though, until the next time I see you, that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.